Hello everyone. Welcome to an another session of uh, refresher course in mathematics organized by Ramanujan College. Uh, in this session, we are going to see different aspects of research methodology in mathematics. So, first of all, what is research? As per the definition given by the Oxford Online Dictionary, Research is the systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish fact and reach new conclusions, right? So it's, it's a systematic investigation and you must reach to some new conclusions. Uh, so let us look at the definition by Wikipedia. It says that research is the search of knowledge or a systematic investigation with an open mind to establish novel facts, usually using a scientific method. Okay. Many of you are familiar with this definition. So, we all know that research cannot be a standalone procedure. It's a sequential discovery and it is done on building by building on previous discoveries. So, as New Isaac Newton uh, said, and I quote, if I have seen further it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So you can see in the picture, it depicts the statement of Isaac Newton. And in 2017, Stephen Hawking said, and I quote, each generation stands on the shoulders of those who have gone before them, just as I did as a young PhD student in Cambridge, inspired by the work of Isaac Newton, James Clerk, Maxwell and Albert Einstein. So there are several aspects of research. So research, uh, so when somebody is doing research, maybe a PhD or an MPhil or an independent research, uh, it's uh, the study is slightly different from the usual degree. So there is a systematic, as in the definition it was mentioned, it's a systematic study. Research is a systematic study. So, there are several aspects of research. So, let us see what are the different aspects of research. Now, the first one comes the motivation and demotivation for research. You may be motivated enough for doing research and then there will be various factors which will demotivate you to do research. But once you are motivated enough to go for research, then you should know how to start how to start doing research. So for that, you have to build a background, a proper background. So that background can be built using literature survey and doing a scientific research, scientific study. And once you have done a literature survey, the next problem is, the next stage of research is how to find a problem. That is a very difficult stage. How to find an appropriate problem which nobody has done so far, which is new. So finding a problem and then once, so you may have variety of problems in your mind, but having only problems doesn't make sense. You must know how to solve a problem. So again, I'll re-emphasize, it's a systematic study. So you should know what are the ways to solve a problem. And while solving a problem, you might need the help of some mathematical softwares like Mathematica, MATLAB, R, Scilab and many others. So, not in all areas you will need these softwares. So, maybe people working in pure mathematics won't use these softwares, but people working in applied mathematics uh, use all these softwares. Uh, not all, I mean few of these softwares. Okay, so once you have solved, you have found a problem, you have solved a problem. Then next stage is how to write a research paper. People think that it's a very easy task, but no, let me warn, it's not an easy task. It's a very difficult process. It's equally important to write a good article as it is to find a problem and solve a problem. So, writing a good research article is an art which one must learn to, good a re, uh, to do a good research. So, you must know how to write a research article and uh, the technical part, if you want to write a re research article, in mathematics especially, 
you must know the editors like LaTeX or PSTRIX. So once you have written a paper, then you must publish it. Otherwise, the paper is of no use. So you should know how to publish it, where to publish it, what are the good journals. And at a later stage, when you have published few papers, you might be asked to review a paper. So you must know what is the process of reviewing paper, what, what is expected out of you. And another important aspect is plagiarism. So we have we will dis we will uh, discuss plagiarism in the other lecture. So you have published your work, you have gone through this plagiarism process. Then when you are doing research, you need to present your work in conferences, right? So for that you have to improve your presentation skills. And in mathematics, uh, if you want to prepare a good presentation then you must learn Beamer. So, that is another aspect. And now your paper is published. But what is the impact of your published paper in the academic community? So, you must know the bibliometrics, which includes citations, H-index, I-10 index, impact factor, and so on. Okay. Also, there is, there is another important aspect which is research funding and funding agencies. Okay. So, we will come to this last topic. Uh, we will discuss it in details later on. So, let us first see few of the motivation, few of the factors which motivate you, motivates you to do research. Okay. So, there are certain external factors and there are certain internal factors and there are some mixed factors. So, uh, one external factor can be that publishing articles is uh, important for one's academic growth. We all know that uh, if if you want to have promotion in our career, if you want if you are applying for a job somewhere, then you must have articles. You must have publications with you. So you cannot grow without having publications. So research is one important aspect for your growth and for few this is the only way to learn or uh, to earn a living so for people uh, who do postdocs for many years they uh, they have to publish the papers they have to do research so for them it's the only way of learn earn, uh, the only way to earn a living and yes the research can give you good money if you obtain some patents then, of course, you can become rich and famous. And there is this important factor, peer prestige. So, this factor can be a demotivating factor as well as a motivating factor. So, why? how come it's a motivation, motivating factor? Many of my friends are doing research. And sh so, should I? Why should I not do, a, do the research? Or it may be that a person which I dislike is doing well, I am better than him, then I should also do research. So, this kind of peer prestige, peer pressure is there. And idolizing someone, so you look after someone, you, you, uh, you had some teacher, some professor whom you idolized, and you want to be like him or her, then you have to do some research. If you want to be like him or her, you, you want to reach to a certain position, which uh, the person you idolized, possessed, then you have to do research. And then you have this competitive spirit. Okay? So you want to do better what has been achieved in the world. Right? So this is the human nature. There are certain internal factors for motivation. So inner beauty of the subject. So in pure mathematics, people say that, many people say that, why do you study pure mathematics when it is not applicable? So, many people do it for the inner beauty. Maths is like an art for them. Uh, challenge of the subject can be another factor. So, there are many challenging problems which I think or a person thinks that he can solve. So, he takes, up, he takes that challenge and he wants to solve it. So, that can result in research and then intellectual bliss 
it gives you that satisfaction so once you prove something even if you go to a classroom if you are teaching and uh, you have come up a new problem for which maybe you don't know the solution or some student has asked you a problem and uh, you spend the entire day or maybe entire night solving that problem and in the morning you are able to solve that problem then you the kind of bliss the kind of satisfaction the kind of happiness you get by solving that problem is incomparable so when you're doing research so after a study of 6 months or 8 months when you're able to achieve something when you're able to obtain some results which are new which can add to the uh, literature positive positive addition uh, then it gives you an intellectual bliss which is incomparable and of course ingrained human nature of curiosity all the research we have seen so far that is a part of curiosity we are curious to know that what happens next and improve the state of the art in technology for so you know that uh, every uh, every month you have different additions different additions of mobiles and some upgraded technologies there so people want to improve the technology so for that research is needed and you want to contribute to the improvement of society right so many there are many areas where if you do some research then that can actually help the society to improve so these are few of the factors which can motivate a person to do research but there are many factors which will demotivate you and in fact if i keep listing if i list all the factors which demotivates a person to do research then the list will be uh, pretty long so one factor is an inadequate infrastructure you don't have proper infrastructure to do research or you don't have funds to do research then that can demotivate you to carry out the research right so we are going to deal with this aspect that is we are going to do uh, deal with research fun funding so research funding plays an important role in one's research career okay so what let us first see what are the sources from which we can get research funding so most of the sources are gov uh, government agencies they are the main providers of research funds and there are some fundings from the industries also where they are looking for patents and they have some real life problems for which they want solution in collaboration with the uh, with the uh, maybe mathematicians or physicians or uh, other science areas for which they can find the solution uh, let us quickly look at the ben benefits of research funding so of course an additional funding for equipments and travel right so we those who work in sciences say chemistry um or maybe uh, physics uh, not the theoretical one they want some money for their equipments for the chemicals so which generally is difficult to get so if you have some funding then of course you can buy those equipments easily and travel is another important aspect so if you want to uh, go to abroad for presenting a paper to attend a conference to attend a workshop or maybe for collaboration for international collaboration then you need fund and your regular job will not give you those uh, those funds or the money to travel internationally leave internationally you will not even get the money to travel in india also so if you want to do an effective research if you want to meet people if you want to present your work at better places then you of course you need funds okay the second incentive the second benefit is the financial incentive okay you get so you have a funding you have a good funding so it will make your research career more attractive so for example nowadays you can't do anything without computer without a laptop so either you spend your own own money or you take some fund research fund and buy buy laptop from that buy desktop from that you you can buy many software so all these mathematical software 
uh, they are very expensive. So either you take the subscription from the library or you have to buy those. So either you do it from your pocket or there are options available. There are funding agencies which give you the opportunity to use those funds to buy these things. Okay. Uh, third point is almost covered in the first funding for conferences overseas, right? For travel purposes. So there are some special funds. There are some special agencies which provide funds for attending the conferences or workshops overseas. They, they, there are separate grants for that. And uh, another uh, uh, another factor, another benefit is you can interact with the government industry people. So you can learn what is going on outside academics. You get to meet people. You get to know much more what you were learning just in a closed cockpit. Your research may actually be used. So the people who work on the real life problem, they can actually see the output of their research. Hmm? And the last benefit, I mean, not the last, but the last point that I want to discuss is social responsibility. So many times you're solving some problems of government by, uh, by surveying the data of something, of some problem, or by doing some other calculations, by providing them different types of softwares, so that is a way back, a way of giving back to the society. So there are many agencies which provide the funds. So, so one of the most important uh, agency is the Department of Science and Technology. So we are, people know it as DST. Uh, so this is run by Ministry of uh, Ministry of Education, Science and Research. So uh, it provides few grants. So first is the Startup Research Grant. The Startup Research Grant aims to assist, assist researchers who are in their early uh, research career and who have joined a new institution. They want to set up the things for their career, research career. So it is for those people. So there is an age limit. There is an age limit to avail this research grant. Okay. Then there is this fast track scheme for young scientists. This is also provided by science and uh, by DST, and it's uh, quite similar with the startup research grant. And there is this Ramanujan Fellowship. This is, although this is not for us, this is for Indian scientists and engineers uh, who stay outside the India and who want to come back to India to research, who who are re who are willing to uh, settle in India. So if they are looking for some uh, uh, some attractive fellowship, then Ramanujan Fellowship is one of them. And there is another uh, agency, which is Science and Engineering Research Board. We know, we call it SERP. So this was established by DST only. It's a part of DST only. But this is more, con um, this is more uh, oriented towards the research uh, in sciences. And there are many uh, funding programs or scholarships or awards and fellowships for people working in researchers working in sciences so the first one is mathematical research impact centric support which is also known as metrics so this is one of uh, this is a very prestigious and a very well known scheme uh, so uh, it has various benefits but one in, uh, one interesting aspect which is included in this scheme is the international travel support. So you can uh, you can travel abroad for attending a conference or workshop and for international collaboration also. Okay, so that is one interesting aspect of this scheme. And initially, it was open only for the people working in mathematical sciences, but later on, it was open to some other areas also, theoretical physics and computer sciences also. Okay, the next one is Teachers Associateship for Research Excellence. Okay, TARE or TER. So, this is this, uh, this uh, fellowship is to facilitate mobility of faculty members who work in the state universities or maybe in colleges and who want to work at IITs or I, Indian Institute of Sciences or ISARs or NITs or maybe in the labs of CSIR, ICR and the 
um, and in the central university so this uh, this scholarship is mainly for the college teachers okay and of course for the state university teachers but this is not for the university teachers this is not for the central university teachers okay next is extra mural research funding uh, this is slightly for a higher level so i'll skip it and then we have early career research award so again it is of the nature of startup grant it is again to provide quick research support to the young researchers so when you take your first assignment so you have to be uh, you have to open your eyes you have to be aware of many fellowships because this is a one time fellowship and one time uh, 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 one one time career fellowship so when you start a job when you start your career and you take your first assignment then only you can apply for this research fellowship research award and then we have national post doctorate doctoral fellowship so uh, this is a very prestigious postdoc fellowship and it's not very easy to get a national npdf which we call national postdoc fellowship so of course it is after your phd so if you want to do your uh, if you want to continue your research so that you can do during your uh, teaching also then serb also gives some overseas postdoctoral fellowship okay so if you want to go abroad to do postdoc then there are plenty of options okay i'll come back to this postdoc fellowship again but it is provided by serb then we have serb international travel support so again this is for those who want to present some research paper in an international scientific event may it be conference workshop seminar so if you want to present your paper you of course you need uh, money if of course you need some fund so this is one option for you and then there is this prestigious inspire faculty scheme okay so those who have done phd can apply for Inst inspire faculty scheme and uh, if chosen you will be given a five years bracket five for uh, you can work for five years at any uh, the any institute recognized by ugc so as i told you uh, there is one uh, there is this serb overseas postdoctoral fellowship but there are plenty of postdoctoral fellowship so uh, i have listed few this list is not a complete list it's not uh, totally exhaustive so uh, there might be some others which i might have missed so let me uh, tell you few postdoc fellowships so one is dart this is a, this uh, all these fellowships postdoc fellowships you can avail of course you can avail after doing your phd but you can avail it while do, doing your job also by taking leave you can take leave and go for postdoc so the first one is dart this is uh, offered by germany and next is humboldt research fellowships again this is offered by germany so you can i have not given the websites here you can search the name search with the name on google and you will find the website there so dard and humboldt research fellowships they are offered by germany then we have indo french postdoc fellowship and there is indo us postdoc fellowship and then again there is a marie curie fellowship which you can avail in european union countries eu then again this uh, there is another prestigious fellowship called jsps uh, this one can avail this in japan so it is offered by japan then there is this full bright nehru pdf postdoc fellowship and you can avail it in uh, the united states so these all these fellowships were for abroad in if you want to work within india then many indian institutes they also offer the post doc doctoral fellowships like indian institute of uh, indian statistical institute isi and few iits not all the iits but few iits also offer post docs uh, ims indian mathematical institute of mathematical sciences and tifr they also offer post doctoral fellowships and there are many other in the list so one is commonwealth scholarship 
Now again, Commonwealth is a very prestigious scholarship. This is for the countries which come under Commonwealth, uh, Commonwealth, and you can avail it in the UK. Okay. So, but this is uh, only for those who are working as a faculty somewhere. Then there are certain uh, fellowships which are awarded by DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization. People working in algebra and cryptography and number theory. So these fellowships are for those people. And uh, the next one is a very common, which usually teacher avail. This is this is the UGC travel grant scheme for college teachers. This is only for college teachers. This is uh, this uh, so you can avail it once in three years. Okay, so. And many people avail it. So don't miss this travel grant scheme for college teachers. You can easily get it to present paper abroad. This is for uh, going abroad, uh, for attending conference or presenting a paper abroad. And then we all are familiar with NBHM, which is the National Board for Higher Mathematics. So they have fellowships for the PhD, for MSc, right? And they have fellowships to attend conferences also abroad. So you can go abroad to attend. To present your paper by taking by availing NBHM fellowship, and they also provide uh, fellowships for postdoc. So PDFs are also available under NBHM, and there are plenty of research grants in CI. You know you are uh, familiar with the um, the JRF, SRF. All of us are familiar with that, but they also provide other research grants also, which include travel grants for international conferences. Right, so these are the uh, regular fellowships or the research grants, and sometimes few agencies also advertise for the project proposals, like DST or ISI has a visiting scientist position. So they also uh, advertise for these visiting scientist position, where you can go and work for three months or six months. So not more than that. They have a limitation. So generally, they are open ended. Okay. Now there are special funding, different fundings for women working in mathematics. So there there are special fundings, separate fund. Of course, women can apply in the previous for all the previous uh, uh, fellowships which I have just mentioned. But there are separate funding just for the women. So for example, there is a DST scholarship for women. Okay. So this is called WOS. You can search it with the name WOS. So they have. Uh, three types of schemes. Uh, so the first is Women Scientist Scheme A. So interestingly, this scheme is for the women who have left their career uh, for some reasons, for family reasons, and who want to come back, who want to come back and do research. So if if uh, if they lie in the group age group of uh, say twenty seven to fifty seven, and they want to return back to the mainstream, then they can apply under this. Program Women Scientist Scheme A and similar uh, requirements are there for Women Scientist Scheme B and there is something called Internship for Self Employment WFC. Okay, so you may look at the details and again there is a very nice fellowship Indo US fellowship just for the women. In STEM, so STEM means science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and medicines. So this is aimed just for the women to work in the US. And recently, SERP also came up with a uh, uh, came up with a research um, program, research fellowship known as Power SERP Power. So P Power stands for Promoting Opportunities for Women in Exploratory Research. Okay, so it has two types of programs. So one is power fellowship, and the other is power research grants. So they have heavy money. The fellowship is quite heavy, uh, and for power research grants, so power fellowship is uh, slightly difficult to get. It's for top performing women research researchers, and you will get it for three years. Uh, for the power research grant, then uh, it has two categories. So category one is people women working in the state universities or colleges. And the funding is up to thirty lakhs for three years. Okay, so it, again the money is the amount is heavy. And category two is people who work in IIT or ISARs or central government universities. Um, 
there the funding is up to 60 lakh for three years okay so this is another good scholarship good uh, research grant for uh, teachers working in universities also uh, in state universities or colleges also okay so uh, i have told you about various funding agencies now uh, whether you will get a funding or not it depends heavily on how you write a research proposal so if you write a very strong a good research proposal then getting the funding is higher but if you write your research proposal poorly not in the correct manner which is expected then of course the chances of getting fellowship will be low so let us see how to write a research proposal a good research proposal right so there are several aspects so those who have seen a research paper they know that there is a structure of a research paper it has to have abstract title introduction and many other things so the same is applicable for a research proposal also okay so what are the different aspects what are the structure what should be the structure of a research proposal so let us see what is the right way correct way to write a research proposal good research proposal so the first part of course the title the title of the research proposal it should not be very long it should be very short but still it should be descriptive enough to give a specific idea what is covered in proposal okay you should not exaggerate a lot so something which you are not covering in your uh, in your proposal you should not put that in the title but it should be it should give a precise information about what you are going to cover in the proposal okay the next is the introduction now introduction of a research proposal is the most important part of the proposal because if you write some very uh, nice sentences very uh, good sentences in the beginning in the introduction then that will help in attracting the interest of the experts okay so you should be very careful while writing the introduction and let us see the points which you should include in introduction so you must tell the importance of your research plan what is the importance then you must include few statements giving the background and the current status of plans research what are the what are the uh, important results which are, which have been proved in uh, in whatever you're going to uh, whatever you're going to propose and uh, are there other people working in this area so what is the current status of the research then a statement of research should be there so what do you mean by statement of research what is new in your approach what were, so people were working earlier in this area and maybe people are working at present also so what new approach you are going to introduce and important the most important point is why is your research important this is the most important point that you should keep in mind why is the research important that you are proposing and how it will help in the development of area so what extra value you are going to add in the literature by doing that research and why is it worthwhile why should the agency give you the money so why is your research problem worthwhile okay and then it should contain a summary statement and you must include the citations of whatever informations and assertions you are making in the um, in the introduction in the beginning okay so after you have written the introduction then comes the background of the study so this is this is again another important point which you should not miss you should give a review a very short review of the relevant literature so whatever you are proposing look at the relevant literature around that problem and then you must give a short very short review not a long one and you must include the recent findings that justify the proposed research project okay because you have to, you have to convince the agency that you want money for your proposal so what are the recent findings 
which will justify your proposal and please you have to cite the published work so citation is important so that they can go the experts can look at the findings which you are claiming next is the research objectives okay so one the first point was background then you have to tell the objective so in the proposal what are you actually planning to do so you have to articulate your objectives in some nice words and then comes the methodology so once you have stated the objectives okay i want to do these 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 things in my research these are aim 1 aim 2 aim 3 and so on then you have to tell the experts that okay yes these are doable i can do this so what is the methodology that you are going to apply okay so you have to give an overview of the scientific approach or the techniques which are to be used in the research and so the technique that you are giving, the approach that you are using, how is your line of attack plausible? So why should they believe that you are going to be successful? And uh, so one should note that there are different methodologies used for research in pure mathematics and used in applied or applicable mathematics. So one should write accordingly. Okay? And then the next uh, part is proposed or predicted outcomes so what are you expecting what are the results that you are expecting to get out of this research and then you must put a list of references which is cited in the proposal which you are citing and that should be in a given so there are many um, many formats to write the references so you should pick up some standard format for these references and depending on the agency in which you are applying for for the proposal you 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 should be asked they might ask you to provide a statement of expenditure how much cost uh, how much will it cost how much your research proposal cost uh, you may be asked to give a breakup how much do you want for contingency for travel for books for consumables so you have to give a statement of expenditure that depends on the agency in which you are applying and time frame this is optional because generally uh, whenever you are applying for a uh, research grant the time frame is given to you it's 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 a project for two years or one year or three years it's given to you so it's an optional thing okay some useful tips to write a research proposals so uh, i have shown you the structure how to write it now let us see how uh, the tips that you can follow to write it properly so you must know the complete guidelines or the instructions for whatever course you are applying for or scholarship or uh, uh, fellowship whichever pro scheme you are applying for you must know the complete guidelines please have a good grasp on the literature of your topic right so that you can convey the significance of your topic to the readers so if you do not know about the literature then if you do not write anything about the past work you just present your own work then that is not going to have a good impact on the experts yeah so this is uh, uh, i think trivial only so the proposed idea should use the first person plural and should be in future tense so generally when we are writing a research article or phd thesis in field dissertation we never write that i have proved this right so we write we so you have to write we shall study okay and this is very important do not give step by step protocols you do not have to give everything there you just have to give an idea overview explain why it is being used and what you hope it will reveal so never give a complete uh, a complete uh, instructions or maybe I mean a complete study should not be there or not all the uh, ways to prove the theorem should not be there okay so you just have to give an overview please keep this in mind this is very important and of course use a standard format for references so these were the few tips from my side there may, there may be many others once you write it then you will come to know 
once you write two one or two proposals you see the sample proposals then you will be able to write a nice proposal okay so thanks for listening i hope the session was useful for you